Sabbath peace. Sabbath it's another opportunity for us to hear and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High, however. Anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to... Uh, let's do uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. John chapter 7, verse 14. Oh, fuck that. No, 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 Now about the midst of the feast, Yahshua went up into the temple and taught. Mm -hmm. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They said, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right? How did the man know the scriptures? Ain't nobody taught him nothing. I'm trying to figure it out. Where you come from? Ain't you Mary's boy? You Joseph boy? How do you know the letters? Right? How do you know the letters, though? He learned the obedience when he was young. He was going to the synagogue. Yeah, right? Didn't he go to the synagogue? And he said at the, at the, uh, the feet of the... Uh, the uh, uh, teachers? Is they the doctors? It was, uh, the doctor that was described. So what do you think? It was described, but they called them doctors, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Doctors, uh, you know, that's a, like when you get your doctor's degree. You know what I'm saying? That's a teacher. You know what I'm saying? You, well, the reason, the reason why they call it a doctor's degree because it basically, you have to. They say you have to know it well enough to teach it that's in order to get that degree. The Japanese language, they call doctor sensei, which means teacher. There you go. So you mean like operating doctors? Like somebody, they call them sensei? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never knew that. You wouldn't know that. I watch anime. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? So he, he went there and he sat down at their feet and he learned from them. Remember, he said he stayed back. It was Passover one year. They went, you know what I'm saying, went to went to Jerusalem for Passover. He ended up staying back. His parents left and they like, hold on, where y'all sure at? Then they had to go back and they was like, oh, they found him at the temple. You know what I'm saying? He is learning. You know what I'm saying? That's how that thing go. Right? So that's how he learned the letter. They wouldn't know from a young age that boy was paying attention. Let's hear about it. Uh, ain't nothing magical. Right? A lot of people look at that and be like, they don't know. They just talking to the, that's the son of God. God's spirit they talk to. I mean, it is. Yeah. Ain't that, it ain't true. But ain't nothing magical. He ain't, he ain't take no shortcuts. He don't get no paths. You know what I'm saying? He, he had to learn just like everybody else. That's the spirit of God in him for sure. But he had to pick up the knowledge just like anybody else. He wasn't going to cheat. Right? It ain't like he was just born with it. Just like, oh, I know it all. No. Boy, he had to get in there. He had to get it from a young age. He had to go in there and study and make sure he understood. Yeah, he was a child. Learned he was obedient. That's books there. What you going to do with it? That's my problem. It's like, it's books. So what you going to do? You can't do nothing. Well, that ain't book. That thing good, too. Keep going. Let's see what we talking about. Yahushua sure answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Okay. If any man do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Okay, so when you read that, how do you know if you learn the truth or not? Whether it be of God or if you speak of yourself. I mean, how do you know? His will. You gotta do his will. You gotta do his will. Right? You gotta do the right thing. You gotta do what you told. You gotta do what the books say. Right? If you can do that, then you will know. So a lot of these people, what's their, what's their question when they're talking to us? I mean, you just, I mean, you got all of these Christians out here and everybody say something <laughs> different. <laughs> How do you know yeah. that what Philip is teaching is the truth? How do you know that what you believe is the truth? Yeah. I mean, how do you know? I know you say you read the Bible for yourself, brother, but when you look at it, how do you know that your understanding is the right understanding? Well, that's easy. That's easy. I do what it say. Yeah. 
book tell you if you do the will of the Father. What happened? Because I forgot what it said. Let me make sure. You know what I'm saying? What did it say? If any man do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. I mean, so if you do it, it ain't that. It ain't like the mystery is removed at that point. Then it's like, oh no, what you doing ain't a God. How do I know? Because I'm doing it. Like I'm, I'm doing what the books say. So now I know what you teaching. That thing ain't of God. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's a lot of deep stuff in this book. Let me tell you, what's not that deep. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> ain't a whole lot. Of, you ain't gonna find a whole lot of people trying to interpret. Oh, now, brother, let me tell you. When he say, "Thou shalt not kill," he talking about "Thou shalt not kill spiritually." No, 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 no. That thing pretty clear. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. The commandments are very clear, right? What you should do and what you shouldn't do are very clear. You know, we start making our mistakes and we'll restart getting confused. I mean, am I supposed to not do all of it? Or if it's just some of it, like is it the Old Testament that I'm not supposed to do? Or is it the New Testament that I'm not supposed to do? That's the part where we get unclear, right? And it's all because we don't want to do none of it. You know what I'm saying? We do our little bits and pieces. Most of our guys just do it. If it's a question of whether all or a little, just do it all. Just start to do it all until you figure it out. <laughs> I mean, that's how you got to do it. I mean, you do that, then it start coming to, oh, because the most I got to open you up to it. That's why we go. That's why we go to the beginning of the book. That's the only way for this thing to open up. You do what it say, then you go to the beginning of the book, and you start getting the information. Let that thing just open up to you. Most I got to open that whole thing up to you. And this he will do, we hope, right? What we leave off last week, you don't take off that darn, I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, we leave off last week. We were talking about uh, Second Kings, First uh, Kings uh, eight. Yeah. And you know, we were talking about First Kings eight, and we were looking at Solomon's prayer. Remember, Solomon made a prayer, and he is saying, uh, he is right. You know, he is the people pray to her to play, even if they taken captive into another land, to the Gentile land. Even if they taken captive, they make a prayer toward this place. We said, hear him. And then remember, we talked about. I was like, yeah, you know, what I'm saying a little bit later, the Most High God came back and he answered Solomon. So we're going to pick up from right there. We're going to go ahead and read. I said, yeah, last week I said we didn't have to get it. But I think it's, a, I think it's good that we see it and we understand exactly why why we do certain things and why the Most High God sets their certain things up. It's powerful. All right? We look at these things. We kind of take some of this stuff for granted. But we have to understand this stuff is power. It's the Most High God we're talking about. Most High God hide his faith from us right now. So a lot of people can front on him like, you know what I'm saying, like ain't nothing happening. You know what I'm saying? They can try, try to front on him. But at the end of the day, that thing ain't moving and shaking. You know what I'm saying? You just got to know enough to be able to know what's moving and what's shaking. But that thing ain't moving and shaking. All right? This is uh, this is Second Chronicles. Give me Second Chronicles. Let me get a uh, verse. Uh, this is Second Chronicles. Give me verse uh, 9. I mean, chapter 9. It's Second Chronicles, chapter 9. Give me verse 1. And when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard, with hard questions. Uh huh. At Jerusalem, with a very great company and camels that bear spices and gold in the. Give bundles. me First Chronicles nine. Is that what I want? It can't be First Chronicles nine. Not like First Chronicles. Ah. He's probably like six. You want? You want six? Give me. Give me Second Kings. I mean, what are we in First Kings? Give me First Kings not. I thought it was Chronicles what I was looking for though. Give me First Kings chapter nine, verse one. And it came to pass when Solomon finished the building of the house of the Lord. Yeah, let's let's see if that if that leads us to where we're going. If it don't, then Second Chronicles six and First Kings eight. You just kind of recap the same thing. Second Chronicles six yeah. and First Kings eight. Just talk about the same thing. So you think I want First Chron? I'm mean Second Chronicles six. Yeah, if you're trying to get with uh, him dedicating it and praying. Ah, uh, yeah. Give me First Chron. Uh, Second Chronicles six. This so Second Chronicles chapter six, verse one. And I still want nine because nine was something good too. We can talk about that next. You know what I'm saying? But let's let's do. Uh, Let's do uh, nine First Chronicles. Nine is when God was like, all right, for sure, if you walk on David, walk on God, you just what nine is saying. Not nah, Queen Sheba? Six. No, first, King, first Kings 9 is God saying, hey, if you... Same as six, right? No, First Kings 8 is the same as six. First Kings 9 is he, God is saying, if you do what David said, I got you. This is after. So if you want the prayer and God saying, I hear you, I think we might need to do chapter six. Second Chronicles. 
Okay, and I still want first, second. I still want Second Chronicles nine too when they're talking about Sheba. We'll go to that next because that was accident, but that's still good. Um, but let's do six right now. So this is Second Chronicles chapter six, verse one. You want the whole thing? All right, what I want. That's not what I'm looking for. Which not 30 people. I'm not looking for come them. From a far country to hear your name say. Also hear his prayer and pray in his house. If you pray in this house, he's just praying for the people. No, not that though. Okay. No, because we already read that last week. Right. So what you looking for? I'm looking for goodness gracious. Alright. So give me give me first Kings mm -hmm. chapter nine, verse one. Alright. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, and he appeared unto him at Gibeon. Right, what was the first time he appeared to him? He appeared to him in a dream. And what, what happened in that dream? Or what happened when he appeared to him? He said, ask what you want, I'll give it to you. And what did he, what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. You know? Right, y'all remember that? Remember he asked for wisdom. Most like God said, oh, well, since you asked for wisdom, I got you. But I'm also going to give you everything that you didn't ask for. Riches. All right? He made him the richest man ever. Yeah, I know what you really want. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, you know, you, nah, you, you slick talking. You know, yeah. I, I get you. you know, I'm going to hook you up, though, because you have for it. I'm getting you everything else that you that you didn't ask for. You know, everything else that's on your mind you didn't ask for. Right? Almost like God gave it to him. Let's see. What up? That the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. Uh -huh. I have hollowed this house which you have built mm -hmm. to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Uh -huh. And if you will walk before me as David your father walked in the integrity of heart. Mm -hmm. And in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. And will keep my statutes and my judgments. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised David your father, uh -huh. saying, There shall not fail you a man upon the throne of Israel. That's right. But if you shall at all turn from following me. He said, At any point, if you turn from following me, though. You or your children. You or your kids. And will not keep my commandments. Okay. And my statutes, which I have set before you. Okay. But go and serve other gods and worship them. Okay. Then I will cut off. Israel out of the land which I have given them mm -hmm. and this house which I have hollowed for my name. So remember what he said. He said if you or your kids don't obey my word not only am I going to cut off Israel from this land but I'm going to cut off also what? And this house. And this house. What do you mean by this house? The temple. The I'm going to get rid of the temple and I'm going to get rid of Israel and I'm going to get it all out of the land. If you or your kids disobey me, right? So guess we know how the story go, right? We know that Solomon ends up disobeying him. So at that point, look how long it took for the Most High God to fulfill that promise, right? He didn't do it right away. We about to read a whole lot of history of Solomon's sons. And Solomon, including a lot of his sons, the majority of his sons, I would say, I think, uh, disobeyed him, right? In most of them in an egregious fashion, not just like no little, you know what I'm saying, no little sin as we might call it. You know what I'm saying? Give him some cracking stuff, right? So we look at it, and it took that long for the most high God to take about the temple. Years. Something like that. About something like that. I don't know. I have to break out my calculations. You said y'all broke 70 Sabbaths, 70 Sabbaths years, something like that. Yeah, where he start? I don't know. I don't yeah, know if he started in the time of Judges or yeah. the time of David. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I have to, I have to, cause well, I can't you know it was four, well from that it's either four hundred or four more. Mm -hmm. Right, so we look at it it's like, uh, well, you know, we know how this thing play out. Right, so it was already a foregone conclusion. So right, David, these things are just building up. He's just adding on to it. Like, okay, so all from, right, yourself. From David up to the time it's taken to Babylon was fourteen. That's why. Let's look at it. Let's keep going. Uh, this is uh, 1 Kings chapter 9, verse what? 6. Verse 6. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 6. But if you shall at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, 
Then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hollowed for my name, and I will cast it out of my sight. Mm -hmm. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. Mm -hmm. At this house, and at this house which is high, everyone that passed by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And shall say, Why has the Lord done this unto this land and to this house? Mm -hmm. And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt. This ain't what I want either. Give me Second Chronicles chapter seven. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Give me about verse uh, five. It gotta be chapter seven. If it ain't chapter seven, TJ, I don't know what I'm about to do. Goodness gracious. It's what? Second Chronicles? It seems like I always have a problem with this same thing. It ain't always so hard for me to remember. It's Second Chronicles. It's Second Chronicles chapter seven. Give me verse. Let's just start at verse one. Just so sure what you listen for? Uh, I don't know. I know it. I know if I hear it. I just. I'm looking for. He answers pretty much what we just read, but he answers with different words. It's gonna talk about the same event though. I think it's in Second Chronicles? Yeah. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. What and is it, verse is that? One. Just, one? Okay. When Solomon made an end of prayer, praying, the fire came down from heaven? That was it? Yeah. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Right. So this is after we read the, we read the prayer last week. So I think this is what I'm looking for. So we read the prayer last week. Right. This is after we read the prayer. Then after that. Fire came down, consumed the burnt offering. Remember, they made all them offerings. So fire came down, consumed the. Remember, the smoke filled in. The priest wouldn't even go in there. Fire came down, consumed the burnt offering. So that's like another sign. Of, oh, okay, this is really from God, right? Keep going. When the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. Uh huh. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, uh -huh. they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Okay. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. <coughs> the priests waited on their offices. Right. And the Levites also with instruments and music of the Lord, which David the king made <coughs> to praise the Lord, because his mercy endures forever. When David praised by their ministry. And the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar <coughs> which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also, the same time, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him, and every great congregation from the entering of Haman unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. Mm -hmm. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away in their tents, glad and merry in the heart of the uh, goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. So they, they kept the day, the, the, the ingathering, all right, the Feast of Tabernacles, all right. So it's an eight-day feast, right, it's really seven days, and then you add an extra day, and they call that the great day, the eighth day. All right, keep going. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. In his own house he pros prosperously effected. Mm -hmm. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said, Here's what I'm looking for. He said, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and he said, what? I have heard your prayer. He said, I've heard your prayer. So that prayer we read last week. When he was like, yeah, if he, you know what I'm saying, if the strangers walk by, and they make prayer toward this place here in the Lord. And, and if the people, they land, and you know what I'm saying, if it ain't producing nothing and they start praying because they sinned against you, because no, it's, it's everybody's sin. He said, no man that goes without, don't go without sin. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, man, did they pray in that direction now? Just hear them, Lord. You know what I'm saying? If we get taken out to a strange land and all that, and we pray, hear us, Lord. So now the more most I got come back, he said, I what? I've heard your prayer. Okay. And have chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. Okay. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, uh -huh. or if I send pestilence among your people. He said, or if I send pestilence among your people, or what else? Among my people. Uh-huh. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. He said, pray, if my people, which are what? Called by my name. Uh-huh. Shall humble themselves and pray. Uh-huh. And seek my face. 
and turn from their wicked ways. And then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Uh -huh. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Hey, hush, boy. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house uh -huh. that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Right? So now this this is what you look at, right? Once you have somebody who put out a prayer and then you got a most high God come right behind it and be like, all right, for sure. These are the things you got to do and I hear, I hear that prayer, right? You seek me humbly, right? Turn from your wicked ways. I hear you. Now you got something you can hold on to. So that's why we pray in that direction, right? That's the wisdom that the most high God gave Solomon. So that take it back to what we went to on the accident. Uh, Second Chronicles 9. Let's go back. Because Queen Sheba, who we're about to read about, hopefully I ain't wrong about this, Queen Sheba came to him asking him a bunch of questions because they heard that he was the wisest one. He was the man who had all the answers. Right? Let's see if we can hear about it. Let's see if we can hear some of his wisdom. <clears throat> It's Second Chronicles chapter nine, verse one. And when the Queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem. What do you mean when you say prove? Uh, test. She came to test him. She's like, all right, let me see what she's talking about. Ain't that what people do? Yeah. Right? Oh, she came to test him. I'm like, all right, I think he's smart. You know, let's see what he's talking about. Okay, so tell me, if you so smart then, and you trying to say that the black people are the Hebrews, then how do you know? Yeah, all right, so how, okay, so tell me how. So where did this come from if? I remember Austin. Austin, when we first, like, really, really started to understand, when we really first started understanding Austin came to me, he was like, all right, he hit me with all the questions at the end of the conversation, he was like, all right, bro. He was, like, he was like, you got it. That's what, that's what we're about to read right here. Watch this. It's uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 1. And she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company. Mm -hmm. And camels that bear spices. What do you mean when you say very home? great company? A whole lot of people. Oh, she brought an audience. Yeah. Right? She said, oh, she was like, okay, let me, let, let, I mean, let's just see. Everybody, we just see for ourselves if he really what he's talking about. She brought a whole bunch of people. What else? And bear spices and gold in abundance and precious stones. Mm -hmm. And when she was come to Solomon, she continued with him of all that was in her heart. Mm -hmm. Communed with him of all that was in her heart. Mm -hmm. And Solomon told her all her questions. And there was nothing hid from Solomon, which he told her not. Mm -hmm. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, his cupbearers also, and their apparel, and his accent, and his accent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land. He exhausted her. When they say no more spirit in her, he exhausted her. She was just like, oh. Right? She is like, she is like, I ain't got nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Like, she is weak. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. It was a true report which I heard in my own land of your acts mm -hmm. and of your wisdom. Mm -hmm. Albeit, I believe not their words until I came and my eyes have seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told to me. All right? For she said, I heard a whole lot about you, but uh, that didn't describe half of it. All right, what else? For you exceeded the fame that I heard. Uh huh. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, which stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Uh huh. Blessed be the Lord your God, which delights in you to set you on his throne to be king over the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. To be king for the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Because your God loved Israel to establish them forever, therefore made he thee king over them, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold. And of spices, great abundance, and precious stones, neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. Mm -hmm. And the servants also of Huram, and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought all gum trees and precious stones. Mm -hmm. And the king made of them all gum trees, terraces of, uh, to the house of the Lord, and to the king's palace, and harps and song of trees for singers. And there, was not, there were none such seen before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked. 
besides that which she had brought unto the king. Mm -hmm. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. All right, so she just went there. Guess where she went? She went to the king. She went to the king where, though? In Judah. In Jerusalem. All right, she went to where the temple was. All right, and she had to go to him and ask questions. I mean, she asked some questions. He answered her question, da, da, da. She was like, you know what? Now I see why the Most High God made you king. All right, your God made you king over his people because he wanted to establish Israel forever. Right, and now I see why this beautiful house and this beautiful temple was put together. Right, the temple was a major piece for us and it continued to be. All right, go to uh, John chapter uh, four. It's John chapter four. It's John chapter four. Let me start at verse one. Do a little bit of reading. This is a. This is John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Yahushua made and baptized more disciples than John, mm -hmm. though Yahushua himself baptized not but his disciples, mm -hmm. he left Judah and departed again into Galilee. Mm -hmm. And he must needs to go through Samaria. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which, Samaria, which is called Sychar, mm -hmm. near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm -hmm. Jacob, so remember it. Near a parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, right? So Jacob, who's Yisrael, right? That was his name, Israel. He gave pieces of land to different pieces of his family, right? Joseph, he gave a well to, right? So at this time, you remember Jacob set up a place of worship. Who remember what that place was? Bethel. Bethel, right? You remember on Bethel, he saw a vision. What was there? On the ladder, right? So you remember at the beginning of Yahushua's walk, he uh, he uh, he told uh, who was it? Thomas, maybe. What? Didn't he tell, tell Thomas about a vision? He was like, today, you know what I'm saying? There's a ladder going. You know what I'm saying? The angels descending up and down. He's, yeah, he said. Uh, he said, this day you'll see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Yeah, on the Son of Man, right? So that, that connects those two, right? That makes Yahushua the house of God. Bethel is what that means, house of God, right? So that made Yahushua the house of God, right? So now we're looking at Jacob now who gave a parcel of land to Joseph and that's where they are right now, right? Now watch what this lady said. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm -hmm. Now Jacob's well, was there. Mm -hmm. Now sure therefore being weary with his journey sat thus on the well mm -hmm. and it was about the sixth hour. Mm -hmm. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahushua said unto her, give me the drink. Mm -hmm. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Mm -hmm. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you being a Jew ask drink of me which is a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. All right, we're going to talk about why the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. We ain't going to get into it right now, but one, just just put a pin in that. We'll talk. There's a couple things right here we're going to talk about. Yeah, put a pin in it. Bethel, that's one of it. We got we to gotta talk about how Bethel came into the picture, right? We know that Jacob set it up, right? So that was a real place. And we're going to have to talk about, okay, how did that come back into the picture at this day, right? Let's see. Keep going. Yahshua answered and said unto her, if you knew the gift of God, and who and who it is that said up to you, give me the drink? Mm -hmm. You would have asked of him, and he would have gave you living water. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto him, Sir, you ain't got nothing to draw you with. You have nothing to draw with. Right? She's looking at like you ain't got nothing to draw. How you gonna get some water? He ain't even got nothing to dip the water in there with, sir. Right? Let's hear about it. Keep going. Yeah, the well is deep. You see that? That's a deep well. What you gonna scoop it out with your hand? That thing deep. Your arm can't reach down there. Yeah, like talking about some living water. Keep, keep going. Let's see. From where then have you that living water? Mm -hmm. Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, mm -hmm. and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. Yeah, you can get some of this water. Go ahead and get your little long rope, tie it to a little bucket, dip it down there. You're going to dip it down there. You're going to drink it. And it's going to be refreshing for a little bit. 
but then you have to dip it again, right? He said, whoever drank the nymph water, they're going to be thirsty again. Let's hear about it. Well, whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. For the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Mm. He turned every man into a well, right? And not just a well, a spring, right? Keep going, watch this. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto her, Go call your husband and come here. All right, go get your husband then. We can, we can figure this thing out. Let's see what she said. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yo, she would say, yeah, okay, I know. And y'all, she would say unto her, you have said well. Right, he I said, yeah, husband. I know. You said well. What else? For you have had five husbands, and he whom you uh, now have is not your husband. And mm -hmm. that said, truly. Right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't just running your mouth. You're right. You don't have no husband. You think you're lying to me right now. But no, you, you don't have no husband. Because you had five of them. And even the one that you with now ain't your darn husband. Right? Sometimes it's tough for us to have that conversation with people. Yeah, look how look how y'all sure laid that thing out. We I mean we struggle with it. We like, you know, we start, you know, we start beating around the book like, uh, well, you know, I just wanna uh, y'all sure just lay that thing out for her. Like, yeah, you right. You ain't got no husband. Did you have five of them? And the one you got now ain't even your darn husband. <laughs> right? Just lay it right out for her. Watch what she say to him then. Sir, I perceive you as a prophet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Uh huh. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So notice what happened. She said, I perceive. He told her something. It's like, there's no way you don't know me from anybody. There's no way that you know that about me. So immediately, she's like, oh, this guy's a real deal. I perceive that you actually are a prophet. So then immediately, what did she do? Nah, immediately she asked a question. Right? She's testing them. Right? She she's testing them. She got she got to figure it out, just like the Queen of Sheba. Right? I want to figure it out. I want to know what are we doing? Right? What are we looking at right now? Right? Watch this. And Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, an hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem, Jerusalem worship the Father. Uh huh. You worship what you know not. Zakai, hush. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. He said, Ye worship what ye know not. That ain't even how he said it. Read how he said it. He said, Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye worship, ye know not what. Right? He said, You don't know what you darn talking about. That's what we look at. These people run their darn mouth. You don't know what you darn talking about. You talking about worship in this mouth. So she asked him a question. Okay, since you a prophet and you know, we've been trying to solve this issue. The Jews tell us that we got to come down there. But we, when we learn this word, they told us that we supposed to be chilling right here. We're going to talk about how that how that difference came. You know what I'm saying? How, how, how easy it is to just start a tradition. Because it's not based off of nothing. It's based off of Jacob, who's a real person, who really set up a well, right? And who really set up Bethel for them to worship. So that all comes from real stuff. But then you drive it down and you put it up against something else that's real and you make it seem like the two are opposing. So it's just like the people that say, no, nah, see, it's Old Testament only versus the ones that say, no, it's New Testament only. Those are both real things, right? But y'all oppose, y'all put them up against each other like, like, that's like, no, that's not real. That's fake. And that's what's going on here, right? Kind of. Right? So she's looking at it and she's like, all right, well, let's, you know what I'm saying? Since you're a prophet, I believe that you're a prophet now because I was sitting here testing you and you came up with all these answers. Right? And you know who my husbands are. That's not really my husband. Okay, well, since you're a prophet, then what mountain we spoke Is it Should it be in Jerusalem or should it be here? Y'all, she was like, man, you don't know what you darn talking about. He just flat out just talking. You don't know what you darn talking about. Don't even worry about it. The time will come and you ain't going to worship there or here. And why? But the hour comes and now is when the true worshippers worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Why is it going to be in neither place, though? Because God knew he was going to take away the temple and take the Because he told Solomon. He told him, boy, if you or your son don't listen, not only am I going to cut Israel off from the land, but I'm also going to cut off the temple. He told them. They thought it was over with because Babylon already came and cut off the temple and they rebuilt it. They thought it was done. Oh, like, I was like, oh, y'all thought I was playing. 
Right? Y'all thought I was playing. That's the problem. Okay. The hour comes. The hour comes. Don't worry. Oh, the hour coming and now it is. You have to worship in spirit and truth. It ain't going to be nowhere. In other words, what he's telling you, it ain't going to be nowhere to darn worship. You got to do that thing in spirit and truth. So that's why in the beginning of the book of John, we ain't got to grab it. But in the beginning of the book of John, he's like, uh, house of God, Bethel, is where Jacob saw the ladder with angels ascending and dis descending. Then he had to remind us, like, oh, this day, you're going to see angels descending, uh, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Because he had to show us the house of God now is the most high God. It's his son. Right? And then when I go, you got to do it in spirit. Because now the house is not a, a physical place. So you got to handle that thing in spirit. Same thing in Ezekiel. Right? When, when, Babylon, when Babylon came and took our temple, right? And they destroyed our temple. He told us, he is like, I will be a little sanctuary to you wherever you go. Right? That's the same thing. He's saying pretty much the same thing. I'm going to be a little, a little miniature sanctuary wherever you go. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't, you ain't going to have no temple no more. Right? Most like God always going to provide a little way for it. He's going to make sure we are all right. Right? He's going to cover himself. That's all he's really doing. He's covering this. He'll make sure that can't nobody point to him and be like, no, nah, you're alive. Right? He's going to cover himself. Right? So we look at it. Watch this. Jump on down to verse 39 real quick. Watch what, watch what happened at the end of this thing. Mm-hmm. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. Right? What do you think happened with Queen Sheba? Mm -hmm. Right? She heard that stuff from Solomon, gave him all that stuff, and she brought a big audience, didn't she? Went back and told her, listen, he told me everything. All the questions I had, man, listen, that man, that boy Solomon answered it all. Whole book got to testify to man. Whole book got to testify to man. Let's grab uh, Luke for me, Luke 11. <clears throat> it's Luke chapter 11, we're going to start at verse 27. Luke chapter 11, verse 27. All it takes, we just got to sit down and learn the book. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. That's part of it, at least. You know what I'm saying? You learn the book, then you just got to obey it. That's the most important thing. You got to obey it before you learn it. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the, com of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. Uh huh. But he said unto her, Yea, rather. Y'all understand what she just said? Blessed is the person that born you. Right? He said, Yeah, you bl bless your mama. God bless your mama. She raised a good boy. That's a normal thing, right? Y'all gotta understand me. Y'all gotta look at y'all gotta look at y'all sure, man. That thing is he's different. He's not a regular guy. You read about him and you can kinda you can kinda easily kinda just dismiss what you read, like, oh, okay, and just keep on reading. But you gotta really take it in and just say, what would you do if you actually were dealing with somebody who responded this way? It's not normal. Like it's it's not like it's not like, you know what I'm saying, like that's no, it's not normal. Like you would, you would have, you're either gonna love him or you're gonna hate him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like that's not, he's not a normal guy. Like imagine like some prominent speaker, right? And somebody just yell from the crowd like, man, your mama raised a good boy. Bless your mama. Your mama, I mean, she raised your butt right. And then he respond and say this. Yeah, but rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, but you know what I'm saying? But really, blessed are the ones that do what the most high like God said. I heard the word and then I start doing it. I ain't got time for all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I guess. You know, the bless your money. I guess, but you know what I'm saying? Really, blessed are the ones that, that hear the word of the most high like God and keep it. He's trying to let you know, keep focused. Stop, stop y'all focus on too much stuff. Stay focused on the word. Keep going. And when the people were gathered thick together, he uh -huh. began to say, this is an evil generation. He said, it's an evil generation. They seek a sign. They seek a sign. And there shall no sign be given. He said, no good. sign going to be given to it. Zakai, in the room. But the sign of Jonah the prophet. Mm -hmm. For as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so also shall the Son of Man be to this generation. The queen of the south shall rise up. And he said, the Israel. queen of the south. Talking about Queen Sheba. She'll do what? 
rise up in judgment with the men of this generation mm -hmm. and condemn or, and with this generation and condemn them for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for they repented at the for they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold a greater than Jonah is here so you know what he's saying Queen of Sheba heard that word and she obeyed it. He said, he said, listen, I mean, it's good. No, my, bless me. Okay, I get it. I, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, bless the ones that hear the word and then they just do it. Then he went on to tell you, the queen herself, oh, she going to condemn the generation. How is she going to condemn the generation? Only way she can condemn them now is if she made it. Well, know you not that you will judge, judge Going to judge the world and angels, yeah. Right? Only way gonna do it is Queen. Let me tell you about Queen Sheba. Solomon, we don't even know if Solomon made it or not, right? We don't know. Maybe, maybe Solomon repented before he died. I don't know. We don't know that. Guess what we do know for sure? Queen Sheba got in there. Right? We ain't gotta get it, but that takes you back to what Paul said. Remember, Paul said, I gotta keep on training. I gotta make sure I'm sharp and tight. Otherwise, I'll mess around, be I'll preach the word and I'll be the one that's rejected. Ain't nobody, nobody is going to make a fool out of God. Nobody is going to make a fool out of Nobody gets by. Ain't going to make a fool That's crazy. All right. Let's go to, uh, let's go, let's do 1 Kings 11. Let's try to keep the thing pushing. We'll leave off at 8. So then we read a little bit of 9. Let's just jump over to 11. Let's see what else we got coming here. Because at some point, we got to talk about, you know what I mean? We got to talk about some, you know what I mean? <laughs> some point, we got to get to the nitty gritty. What happened to Solomon? And the captains over the hundreds did according to all the things. Oh, wait, you said first king? Yeah, first kings, chapter 11. We can start at first one. <clears throat> But King Solomon loved many strange women. Oh! King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. women of the Moabites, Ammonites. So he had a daughter of Pharaoh. He had the, the Moabites. He had the Ammonites. Edomites. Right? The Edomites. Sidonians. He got with them darn Sidonians. You know that's a no no. And Hittites. He got the, oh, you know you ain't got no business messing with no darn Hittites. Okay. You messing with the Hittites? That's crazy. What else? Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, mm -mm. Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. Then the one most of God specifically said, Leave them alone. What else? Surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. No, God. I'm just trying. I mean, she's a beautiful woman. She coming to my country, right? I, I serve you, Lord. She gonna convert to my religion. Let's hear about how that happened. Most like I said, surely if you mess with them, they gonna turn you away from your God. Let's see how that happened. Solomon clave unto these in love. Oh, he fell in love with them. What else, Solomon? And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. Mm. Wow. And his wives turned away his heart. Oh, they turned his heart. Just like the most I got said? That's crazy I got be right. Let's see. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, and his wife turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Let's hear about what he started doing for his wife. For Solomon went after Astarith, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Uh -huh. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, and did as did David his father. Mm -hmm. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem. He built high places for these guys? I wonder why he would do that. And for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. He did them for his wife? Oh, yeah. He started building these things for his women. 
Right? Let's see. Keep going. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. He said, he said, I didn't just appear to you once now, boy. I appeared. It's not a lot of people that can say the most like God appeared to him twice. Mm -hmm. He said, I appeared to your butt twice. And you still, that's why in the beginning when we talk about it, we say, you know, got a nice house, nice car, get the prophecy, get the tubs, or any supernatural experience. It can and will be used against you in the day of judgment. What do you think the most like God was saying there? Where he said, I appeared to you twice. You think he is saying that for his benefit? No, he's using that against him. He's like, oh, I appeared to you twice. That's a blessing now. Right? And you still disobeyed me. Keep going. And it is, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. Mm -hmm. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of you, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded you. I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. Okay, so he said, I will surely rend the kingdom. What does that mean, rend the kingdom? Like rip. That thing will be ripped from you and I'm going to give it to who? Your servant. What verse is that? Uh, 11. 11, keep going. Notwithstanding in your days, I will not do it for David your father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of your son. He said, when it gets to your son, I'm taking that thing from you. Right? Keep going. How be it. I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Mm -hmm. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. Mm -hmm. He was the king's seed in Edom. Mm -hmm. He was of the king's seed in Edom. Jump on down to verse 26. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat and Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's right. servant. So you have Jeroboam, who Solomon's what? Uh, son. Son or what? Jer what is that? Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Oh, Jeroboam the son of Nebat and Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zeruiah. He, he's Solomon's Zeruiah. servant, right? So he said, I'm going to rend the kingdom from you and give it to who? Servant. Now he started talking about Jeroboam, who's Solomon's servant. Let's hear about it. Whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman. Even he lift up his hand, his hand against the king. Mm -hmm. And this was the cause that he lift up his hand against the king. Why did he talk to talk bad about the king? Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. Mm -hmm. and the man and the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at that when time. When he said he made a ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph, what does that mean? He gave Joseph, uh, he made him uh, ruler over his inheritance. I know, but what does that mean, though? What does that mean for all the tribes? If you rule him over Joseph, what does that mean? Yeah, Ephraim. What does that mean? Over Israel. You rule over Israel. You rule over Israel, right? If you remember, when we read all. We got to do it. We might as well just go ahead and do it. Grab, um, my family LT. This is, uh, hold we got there. Go to Genesis 40, 46? 49. 49 is what I want? Genesis 49? Not the blessings, the sons. Right before the blessings. 49 what I'm looking for? All right, so this is uh this is uh Genesis chapter forty nine. Give me uh I don't want verse one. Give me like verse uh thirteen. Which tribe you want? Which No, no, no. I don't want the tribes. I want I want when Joseph brought his son. So if if, okay, if forty nine right. is the blessings, then give me forty eight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, it's forty eight. All right, so give me forty eight. Maybe I want thirteen. If, yeah. if 49 are the blessings, yeah. Okay, so 13 maybe? You want uh, 16. 16? So this is, uh, this is Genesis chapter 48, verse 16. Watch what the book says. The angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads. And Notice that he said, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. What angel can redeem from evil? Yahushua. Yahushua is the only one that can redeem me from evil. Right? What angel was he referring to, though? Right? What did he ask that angel? Bless him. Well, he asked him that too. What did he ask him for? He made a request of him. He was like, uh, tell me what? He said, tell me your name. Yeah, then what did the angel say? Why you want to know my name? Angel wouldn't tell him his name. Right? 
Oh, yo, she will you talk to you. I was an angel that redeemed from evil. You know angel redeemed from evil? All right? All right, keep going. <coughs> Bless you. And let, and let my name be named on them in the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Uh-huh. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his hand Oh, okay, no, we started, too, we started too late. Let's go back. So that's, uh, that was 16 when you started that? Yeah. Give me, uh, give me 13. What does 13 say? Uh, and Joseph took them both, Ephraim and his right hand. Uh, yes, okay, so he Joseph took them both. It's Joseph, right? So just so just so we don't lose what we're talking about. When we read over in Kings, it said that Jeroboam was given the rulership over Joseph. Joseph's tribes, right? So Jeroboam was given the rulership over the tribes of Joseph, right? And then I asked a question, if he has the tribes of Joseph, what does that mean? Right? So now let's look at this. So Joseph brought his sons over, and what happened? And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand. Okay, so Ephraim was in his right hand, right? Towards what? Israel's left hand. So Ephraim was in his right hand. Israel sitting down, right? And that's going to put them on his left hand because they're facing each other. So I'm putting my, my son my named Ephraim in your left hand. But then I did what? And Israel stretched out and... And Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand and brought them near unto him. So Manasseh is in my left hand, right? And I put him in his right hand. What do we know about the right hand? The blessing. All right, that's where the blessing comes from. That's where the, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to give a blessing, you want to be in the right hand. So I'm putting, I'm putting Manasseh in his right hand. I'm putting Ephraim in his left hand, okay? All right, let's hear about it. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. Who whoa, 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 Let me make sure. I took Ephraim and put him in his left hand. I put Manasseh in his right hand. However, it say when Yisrael took his hand, his right hand, somehow he put it on Ephraim's head. And what else? And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger. And his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So that means he like this. Right? Now, like T said, Joseph did that thing for a reason. He is like, well, my older son need to get the, the larger blessing, because that's my older son. So let me put him in your right hand. My younger son can go in your, 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 your left hand, because, you know, see, he's the young. Right? Book say... Jacob did that thing wittingly. Right? He knew exactly what he was doing. He put it like this. Right? Let's see what happened next. Watch out. Joseph was like, all right. Joseph was like, no, 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 no. Not so far. <laughs> Watch and he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, blessed the land. Right? So notice he did not bless Joseph. It says he blessed Joseph, right? But notice he did not bless Joseph. He ain't touched Joseph. He has his right hand on Ephraim's head and his left hand on Manasseh's head. And in doing that, he's saying he blessed Joseph. Watch this. Keep going. In the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Uh huh. But when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. Hey! Y'all be quiet down there. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Put your right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. Mm -hmm. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. Mm -hmm. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Mm -hmm. And he blessed them that day, saying, And thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. Mm -hmm. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you. Bring again, bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thee, your brethren, mm -hmm. which I took out of the hand of the Amorite, which my sword, with my sword and with my bow. All right, so that's the portion that he gave to him. Including the land that the lady at the well was talking about. 
right? So he said, I gave you one portion of, of, of your brother. So you can see the whole book is connected. The whole book just lined up, right? How do we know this if we don't know our history? We read over this stuff and it's just like, we just kind of read it up in, in a vacuum, just everything, everything by itself. No, whole book got to stack on top of each other, right? Right, not just when we're trying to line up how, how I relate to Yahushua, everything, everything we look at, it, that thing got to line up and stack. Otherwise, we don't know what we're doing. We just make it a mess. Right? Keep going. So he gave one portion of brother brothers. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end of it? Yeah. All right, now let's go to, uh, now let's go to uh, 49. Okay. And then uh, help, me find, help me find what I'm looking for. You're looking for Ephraim? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking for, yeah. yeah. Ephraim, uh, yeah. Ephraim. All right, so remember, Joseph... The one they had the great. Remember, both of them, Ephraim and Manasseh, represents Joseph, right? Because he didn't put his, he didn't give a blessing directly to Joseph. He gave a blessing to Ephraim and, and Manasseh, who were Joseph's sons, right? right? So that represents Joseph, and then Ephraim got the greater, greater blessing of that. Now watch, now watch the the blessing again that he pronounces on the Ephraim. Uh, Joseph is a fruitful bow. All right, so he's talking about Joseph. What else? Even a fruitful bow by the well, uh -huh. whose branches run over the wall. The archers have solely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms in his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Mm -hmm. Even by God of thy father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under, blessings of the breast and the womb. Blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors mm -hmm. unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. I don't know what you're saying. Go on, boy. Oh. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brother. Mm -hmm. And that was it for Joseph. So read that last part again. The blessings of my father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills they shall be on the head of Joseph. And on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brothers. All right? So on the crown of him that was separate from his brothers. So that means that Joseph would be the ruler. Right? Joseph was set up. Joseph's, Joseph's tribes were set up to be the ruler. Of Joseph's tribe, the head tribe is Ephraim. So the one that runs Joseph's tribe, or Ephraim, is the one who rules all of Israel. So now Jeroboam was given Israel. I mean, I'm sorry, given Joseph by um, by uh, uh, Solomon, right? So Solomon said, you can run it. Now this is God's plan, right? God is, God, Solomon don't know what he's doing. He's just looking like Jeroboam, you know what I'm saying? You're a, you a worthy person, you take care of business. Go ahead and take, you know what I'm saying? Rule, rule Israel for me, right? Rule Joseph for me. Because if you rule Joseph, guess what? You can run the whole show, right? That reminds us of who? I right, just kind of think about all the people who ran the show so far. Kings. Who ran the show before this? Yeah, David and Solomon. David. Right, yeah, David and Solomon. Saul. Right, yeah, Saul. Right, he's from Benjamin. Yeah, Moses. Yeah, uh, Joshua. Ah, from, yeah, Joshua. Joshua yeah. Where was Joshua from? He's from Ephraim. Joseph. Right? He's from Ephraim. You notice the first person that ran the show after Moses? Ephraim. Ephraim. Son of none. Right? The whole time, the the, uh, the 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 tabernacle. Where's the tabernacle been this entire time? Uh, Ephraim. It's been in Ephraim. The whole time, it was in Shiloh, a place called Shiloh, which is in Ephraim, right? So Ephraim was the Judah, right? Judah is now becoming Judah now because David came. David came along and he's splitting things. So notice, he told him, "I'm gonna rend this from you," but he's already had this in place. This has already been happening. Right? He's already been rending it because most High God is already, he's just thinking, away. Hey, we already, he already know how this stuff about to play out. He just putting everything in play. So when we happen, then we realize what's been in place. Right? So he said, okay, I'm going to rend that thing from you. All right, meanwhile, while he said that, Solomon already had Jeroboam running some stuff. Jeroboam already starting to get fed up with what's going on. Solomon don't know. All this stuff is already in the works. Solomon just don't realize it. Then he tell him, I'm going to rend it from you. And all of a sudden, he realized it. Watch this. Let's go back to, uh, where were we? Uh, first Kings. 11, 11, what? 28. All right, it's uh, First Kings chapter 11, verse 28. I 
love this thing, man. This thing. This history so rich. Ain't nobody got no history like us. Nobody got history like us. These people lost their darn mind thinking they got some darn history. Now the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. Uh huh. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out to Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. Mm -hmm. So had, now prophet of the most high God, and who was a what? Shilonite. So what is Shiloh? Ephraim. Ephraim. So he had a prophet that was even from Ephraim. Came to him and said what? And he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said unto Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I He ripped his rip garment into twelve pieces. Wow. Then he told Jeroboam, Go ahead and take ten of them. He said, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give you ten tribes. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. How many tribes did I leave over? You got twelve. He take ten, he take one. How many you got left? Benjamin. You only got one left, yeah. right? It's, end up, it's going to end up being Benjamin is that one left. And then that explains why the first king of Israel was who, from who? Benjamin. From Benjamin. Right? So you had the, the after Moses, first person running the show, Joshua, who is from where? Ephraim. Ephraim. Then after that, you get Benjamin, who's like this, you know what I'm saying, this like kind of loose tribe. Then after that, you get Judah. Right? All right, let's see. Keep going. Benjamin claimed to Judah just like Jonathan did to David. That's right. Mm. That's right. Whole book got to line up. You and he said unto Jeroboam, uh, oh, sorry. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the tribes of Israel. Uh -huh. Because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, mm -hmm. and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, mm -hmm. and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Mm -hmm. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make, I will make him prince all the days of his life, for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose, mm -hmm. because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto you, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen in me to put my name there. And I will take thee and you, and I will take thee, and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires, and shall be king of Israel. And it shall be, if you will hearken unto all that I command you, and walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandment, as David my servant did, that I will be with you, and build you a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto you. God is fair. He made an offer to him, too. He's like, now, you know what I'm saying, you ain't David's son now, but I tell you what. <laughs> you do what I tell you, you do what I tell you to do, I look out for you. You know what I'm saying? I do exactly what I told that. I, I, I set it up for you. All you got to do is do what I tell you to do. Right? Notice what he said before that, though. He was like, you can run it how you want. Right? Read that part again. Most I got, look, you got to pay attention when most I got be talking. When Naomi talk, I'm trying to tell you, he know what he's doing. Watch. Why would he say first? I will take you and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires and shall be king over Israel. Listen, run it how you want to run it. But if you do what I tell you to do, I'll look out for you. You'll be all right. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's yours. Run it how you want to run it. However you want to run it, that's you. Right? Let's see. What else we got? And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Mm -hmm. And Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam. Mm. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt unto the death of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did in his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? Mm -hmm. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. Mm -hmm. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. Grab uh, John. So Rehoboam is Solomon's son, right? His name is Rehoboam. Grab John 19 real quick. I got it noted down here, so I want to see what I was thinking when I wrote it. Ah, oh, yeah. John chapter 19, yeah. 
In John chapter 19, verse 23. Mm, I'm all about this thing. John chapter 19, verse 23. Watch this. Then now notice, hold on, before we get so sorry, <laughs> notice. Jeroboam, he had a garment on. Right? Elijah came through and he said, I'm gonna rip that thing in 12 pieces. He told him to pick up how many? Ten. And he said, I'm gonna get one to David's group. Right? Now watch this. This is John chapter 19. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Yahshua, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart. Mm -hmm. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Mm -hmm. and they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rent it. <laughs> let us not what? Lots, let us not rent it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be. Mm -hmm. That the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. All right? So you see... They couldn't rip his coat. Right? Because the prophecy got, if they rip his coat, guess what? There's got to be another side. That means we're splitting the tribes again. God said that they're going to be one in my hand when the Messiah comes. He said, hey, I mean, what if they just would have ripped it in two? Uh, they ain't booked. God said, I'm going to take Israel and Judah, and they're not going to fight with each other no more, but they're going to be one again. I mean, last time a garment got ripped, you know what that meant. You know what the Messiah got to do then? To oh no, my coat did. Y'all ain't going to tell you. They said, that thing had no seams. They just looked at that thing. Do you think they care about seams? <laughs> I mean, you just making a mess out of me. You slapping a man, putting a, a crown of thorns on his head. Then all of a sudden, you care. You, I mean, you concerned about seams. That thing ain't got no... You don't think they could have ripped it even though it didn't have seams? They ain't thinking about no darn seams. You think it was 12 seams inside of his other... Uh, inside of, uh, Inside of uh, uh, Jeroboam's uh, jacket? No, it wasn't no 12 scene, but he still ripped that thing. They could have ripped it, but you know, the most I got put on their heart, they all of a sudden, they just, hey, they don't have no scene. Bro. We might as well keep it together. Right? That's book. What you gonna do with the man when the man's so darn perfect? You ain't you. I mean, we, we have no idea. Most I got, you gotta open up our eyes so we can notice some of this stuff. You know how much stuff in this book that we probably ain't even caught yet? That's why you gotta keep yourself humble, man. You just gotta keep on looking and looking at this book because that thing keep coming. You don't know how much stuff is in this darn book. These people ain't got a darn clue. And we feel like we got a little clue. There's probably somebody out there, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Somebody on the other side of the world that's studying this book and they look at us. Oh, they ain't got no darn clue. You know what I'm saying? You never know where you are. That's why at the end of the day, man, it's all about you just obey that thing and make sure you're getting in there. There's always something to learn in this book. Let's hear about it. Let's uh, let's go back uh to uh, where were we at? First uh, Kings eleven twenty eight. Wait 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 forty two. Oh, we finished it. Go to uh second uh Samuel then. Second Samuel. Yep. Cause remember I told y'all he had this in the works already. Yeah. All right, so I told y'all we were gonna go back to all this, but you know I kept on forgetting. So we this is a perfect time to go back anyway. This second Samuel chapter two. Give me verse one. So y'all remember Joab, right? Remember Joab got killed by Solomon because David was like, you got to bring Joab to judgment. I mean, Joab to, uh, to, to judgment. And you remember Joab, he stood by the altar. He was like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Y'all going to come get me, come get me by the altar. And all the people was like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? He by the altar in the temple. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to go get him, right? Then they took that back to Solomon. Solomon was like, what's the trip for? Go in there and get him. Because remember the law told us that even if they by the altar, you go get their butt. Right? And the reason why all that had to happen because David said Joab had to get it because he killed a man in peace. His name was Abner. Right? So we talked about it, but we never did read it. Let's read it now because there's a whole lot more to this story now. So this is 2 second, uh, second Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. 2 <clears throat> Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. So David went up... Uh, this second Samuel or first Samuel? The second Samuel. Okay. And David went up there, and his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Carmelite. Mm -hmm. And his men that were with him did David bring up every man with his household and they dwelt in the cities of heaven 
And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. So now this is when David was first made king. But he was king over the house of what? Judah. Notice that. He was made king over one tribe, right? Over the house of Judah, right? Keep going. And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh Gilead were they that buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto them of Jabesh Gilead and said unto them, Blessed be Blessed be you of the Lord, mm -hmm. and you have showed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord showed kindness and truth unto you, and I also will require you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Mm -hmm. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Mm -hmm. But Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. All right, so Abner, who who used to serve Saul, right? So that was Saul's man, right? So the way Joab is to to uh, to David is the way Abner was to Saul. So when he saw that David was made king over Judah, he was like, "Well, the only right thing to do is you take Saul's son and make him king." So he took Saul's son, and what happened? And brought him over to Mahanaim. Uh huh. And he made him king over Gilead and over the Asherites. Uh huh. And over Jezreel. Over and Jezreel. Over Ephraim. Okay, and over who? Ephraim. Over Ephraim. What else? And over Benjamin and all over Israel. Oh, so he gave him the whole Israel. All of Israel he got, except for what? Judah. Except for Judah. So there goes our split. Right? That's where the split started. Right? Remember, Most High God had all this stuff in the works already. We just don't realize it. We just look at him, we don't think nothing of it. So now when he says, oh, I'm going to split you, really the history that supports that split, that Rehoboam and Jeroboam is about to face, it's already there. So the people are already in line with it. Right? So let's 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 keep reading. What verse is that? Uh, we're on verse 10. Now. That's verse 10? Let's read verse 10 and then skip down to like... To... Well, let's read verse 10. Let's see. And Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel and reigned two years. For the house of Judah followed David. All right? So the house of Judah followed David, and then Saul's son had the rest. All right? So now let's just jump over to uh, chapter 3. Let's just skip to chapter 3. All right? So this is 2 King, or 2 Samuel, sorry. This is 2 Samuel, chapter 3. Uh, let's jump to verse 6. And it came to pass while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. Mm -hmm. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aaiah. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone in unto my father's concubine? All right, so Abner, you see how Abner was. Abner's man died, Saul dead. First thing he do is, oh, David became king? Let me take Saul's son. And he made Saul's son king over all of Israel. He set it up for him. Right? Then the next thing you say in chapter 3 is, Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. So in other words, he put himself out there. He's like, anybody want it? We good. Who want it? He riding for the house of Saul. Right? Then after that, Saul's son accused him of sleeping with one of Saul's old women. Let's see how Abner reacted to that. Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth. He was very angry at that. Am I a dog's head? He said, am I a dog's head? What's wrong with you? All right, keep going, watch this. Which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul, your father to his brother. Right, he said, I'm family. going against my brothers. I'm going against Judah to show kindness to your dad house. Because I'm loyal to your dad. And you're going to accuse me of sleeping with this woman? All right, keep going. And have not delivered you into the hand of David. He said, at any point I could have had you killed. And you gonna, you going to accuse me of sleeping with this man, woman? Keep going, watch this. That you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman, so do God to Abner and more also, except as the Lord has sworn to David, even so I do to him. He said, just like that? Okay. Now I'm riding with David. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner a word again because he feared him. All right? So then Saul's son was afraid of him after that. 
Because he knew, right? He, he already knew, like, this is the man. Like, he the only reason I got what I got. Because he's the muscle of it. So he looked at him, he's like, why? Well, kill you right now, I'll hand you over to David. After that, Saul's son shut up. He like, why in the world do I accuse him of that foolishness? But look what Abner did next. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, whose who's is the land? Saying also, make your league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring about all Israel unto you. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he said, well, I will make a league with you, but one thing I require of you, that is, that you shall not see my face, except first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. Mm -hmm. And David sent messengers to Isbosheth, Saul's son, saying, deliver me my wife, Michael, which I espoused to me for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And Isbosheth sent and took him and took her from her husband, even from Faltiel, the son of Laish. Mm -hmm. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her to Brunt by Hiram. Then said Abner unto him, Go return. And he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, You sought for David in times past to be king over you. Now then do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. Mm -hmm. And Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went to speak in the ears of David and Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David to Hebron and 20 men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. And Abner said unto David, I will arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a league with you. That you, that you may reign over all that your heart desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. All right? So now David's setting it up with him. They had these private meetings. He's like, look, I'm going to gather all of Israel. And just like I gave it to Saul's son, I'm going to have him come to you now. They didn't listen to me. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have him come to you now. So David made a feast. They chill. They eat. And David sent him away in what? In peace. In peace. Very important. He sent him away in peace. What else? And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop uh -huh. and brought in a great spoil with them. Uh -huh. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, mm -hmm. for he had sent him away as he was gone in peace. Mm -hmm. And Joab and all the host that was with him were come. They told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he had sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Mm -hmm. And Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came unto you. Why is it that you have sent him away, and he is quite gone. Right? So Joab was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is the dude we've been trying to get this whole time. He's like, how in the world, why you send him away? I heard he is here. Why you send him away? Remember, Joab is a killer. So he's looking like, oh, we got to get him. That don't make, it didn't even compute. It like, no, 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 that's the enemy. Why'd you send him away? You had him. You could have got him. What happened? We know how Joab get down. When it came down to even David's son, Joab was like, Oh, that don't make sense. <laughs> he right there? Why you didn't kill him? Okay, I'll handle this. Remember, and he went over there, he put three darts in his heart, mm -hmm. in his chest. Right? Yeah. And after that, he had the young men, he, he had his young boys go do it. Right? So you see, Joab is different. Joab is looking like, oh, no, we got to get him. And then so now he here, but Abner was there. Abner is the number one over there. So Abner is the Joab on the other side. So he's looking like, Oh, no. you, what happened? Okay, watch how Joab handle it. Do you know, Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you? Right? Don't you, don't be stupid, David. He's tricking you. Right? Watch this, keep going. And to know you're going out and coming in and uh -huh. to know all that you do. Mm -hmm. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Syrah. Mm -hmm. But David knew it not. Mm -hmm. And when Abner. So he went behind David back, he sent messengers to go grab Abner. Like, yeah, Abner, yeah, come on back. We got to talk to you. All right, why? Watch this. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly mm -hmm. and smote him there under the fifth rib. Under the what? Fifth rib. Under the what? Fifth rib that he died for the blood of Asael, his brother. Uh, go back. So go back to chapter 2. Yeah. So this is second, second Samuel chapter 2. Give me verse 13. Yeah, Abner killed his little brother. His little brother thought he was with it. He was messing with the wrong one. It's 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 13. Watch this. Hey, all this stuff got a reason. 
Ain't nobody just doing stuff just to be doing it. All this stuff got to read. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down. The one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked it. I always liked this stuff. Mm -hmm. And Abner said unto Joab, let the young men now arise and play before us. Remember, they the bosses. You got Joab, you got Abner, who's like the right hand man to Saul, and to, uh, I mean, well, to David and to, and to Saul. Right? Saul's dead at this point. So Abner's kind of running the show. He see Joab. They got respect for each other because they know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we the ones. So they come to the pool. They just happen to meet. You know what I'm saying? This is right after Israel is on uh, Saul's son's side. And now you got David who got Judah. So they come up to meet. Abner was like, man, why don't you let, you know what I'm saying? Let, let your young boy go up against my young boy. Let's see who got it. Right? You got some soldiers, right? Let your young boy play with my boy. Let him play. They, they call it play, but really they scrap him. He's like, let your young boy go up, and go, up, go up against my young boy. Let's see what happens. Then they arose and went over by number 12 of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth, the son of Saul. Right? So 12 guys from Benjamin that came from Saul's side. Then what up? And 12 of the servants of David. Uh-huh. They caught everyone his fellow by the head and thrust him with his sword in his fellow's side. So mm -hmm. they fell down together. So it's just 12 on 12. It's just a little, you know, quick 12 on 12, but it's to the death, though. Right, so keep going. Wherefore, that place was called Helkath Hazirim, mm -hmm. which is in Gibeon. Mm -hmm. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the son and the men of Israel before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab and Abiashai and Asael. Right, so now after they whooped Abner's boys out, right, then you got the three sons that was there, Joab's brothers, right? Watch what happened. And Asaya was a lighter foot as a wild rope. That boy was fast. That boy was fast. You know what I'm saying? That boy had them wheels. He was looking like, you know what I'm saying? was good. So watch this. And Asaya pursued after Abner, and in going, he turned not to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Right? So now look at it. Abner started to get out of Dodge. His boys got whooped out. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Let the young boy play. His boys got whooped out. So he is like, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'm about to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? We don't want things to get too crazy. He outnumbered now, right? So he get up out of there. He start getting away, right? But Asael said, oh, I can catch him. That's easy money. I can catch him right now. So Asael behind him. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Eating up the ground, too. About to get him. Watch this. Let's see how Joe, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see how Abner gets scared. And Abner looked behind him and said, are you Asael? And he said, answer him, I am. Right? Abner is a respectable man. He turned around, he's looking like, Oh, well, you Asiel. He's like, Yeah, that's me. And then watch what Abner said. And Abner said unto him, Turn thee aside to your right hand or to your left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asiel would not turn to aside yeah. and follow him. He like, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead and beat one of these young boys up. I got it, you got it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and get one of the young boys, take some of their armor. That's you. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, that's you. That's, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and do what you got to do. Go to the left hand or the right hand. Don't keep following me, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. Don't keep following me, boy. Go ahead and get one of these young boys. Y'all got it? Y'all won. Go get it. Go get you some armor, boy. Right? Watch this. How be it he refused to turn aside. Mm-hmm. And wherefore Abner with the hinder end of his spear. Wait, sorry. And Abner said unto him. Yeah, I was about to say, he said something else. And Abner said unto him again to Asael. Turn thee aside from following me. Why should I smite you to the ground? Right? So, so why? 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 Why should I watch it? Why would you say that? How then should I hold up my face to Joab, your brother? That's a respectable man. He knew he was like, now I'm going to kill your butt. I'm going to look your brother in the face. Now, at the same time, he's talking mess. Right? But he's looking, he's like, you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I'm supposed to look your brother in the face. You know what I'm saying? If I kill his little brother. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you go, you know what I'm saying? Go mess with one of the young boys. You know what I'm saying? You, can, you got it. Like, go get him. Y'all won. Go get him. You know what I'm saying? Go get the young boy. I'll let you do it. Go get one of my young boys. But don't don't keep following me, though. He's like, it don't make no sense that I kill you. Joe Al's going to be mad. He talking a little mess at the same time. But at the same time, he's respectable. Dude, he tried to give him a chance. Watch this. Howbeit, he refused to turn aside. Uh-huh. Wherefore, Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib. Under the what? Under the fifth rib. Under the what? Fifth rib. So you think Joe Al forgot about that? He killed his little brother. Hit him under that fifth rib. So when Joab came back, he called he called Abner. He's like, Abner, no, we got some stuff to talk about. He came back acting like it was peace. Stabbed that boy. Where? 
in the fifth rib. Had to be. He was looking like, I ain't never forgot that thing. That's crazy. So that's why he looked at David like, are you stupid? You had him there. That boy killed my little brother. He was right there. Don't you know he tricking you? Right? Then he killed him. All right? So that's the split that we're talking about. All right? That's that split that we're talking about. Israel versus, versus Judah. Now let's finish up. Watch this. This is uh, second... Where are we at? First Kings or Second Kings? First Kings, chapter what? Eleven forty-three. If we use eleven, let's go to twelve. First Kings, chapter twelve, verse one. Watch this. I like to imagine you know, him saying, "Little homie swung a couple things. He's just blocking them things." Like, Boy, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like. Like, little homie. I told you to go home. He tried to tell him. Yeah. He tried to tell him. You know what I mean? This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 1. Watch this. I love this thing. You get talking about this history, man. That thing rich. Especially this part of it, man. It's like, man, what? And Rehoboam went to Shechem. Mm -hmm. For all Israel was come to Shechem to make him king. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. For he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. So you remember Jeroboam got out of Dodge because Solomon wanted to get at him because Solomon heard that he was the one that was supposed to take the kingdom. Right? So remember, Solomon gave him some authority. Ahijah came to him and told him, look, you're going to take the kingdom. You're going to split the kingdom from him. Right? Solomon heard about that. It's like, boy, I'm going to kill you. He ran to Egypt, right? So now Solomon dies. Rehoboam takes the kingdom. Jeroboam hears about it, and he like, oh, now I got something to say. So let's hear about it. That they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore, make the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put on us, lighter, and we will serve you. Right? So now... Part of what Solomon did to have everything built up so great, he put a lot of work on the people. Like the, the people had to work a lot to build all the temples and the job. land. Everybody had everybody had work to do, and it wasn't easy work. It was labor. So they now all of Israel came to him and they said, "Man, look, your dad made the work on us very grievous, right?" And Jeroboam led this charge. They made the work on us very grievous. If you lighten the load, we can kill all of it, right? But let's see what happened. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. Uh -huh. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men and stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do you advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If you will be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. So they gave him good advice. They were like, Listen, serve the people and they will serve you forever. So in other words, lighten up their load. Give them what they asked for, right? And they'll look after you forever. But let's see what Rehoboam did. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with young men that were grown up with him which stood before him. He was like, man, come on now, man. These, these old guys, let me, hear, let me hear what the young boy got to say. Let me hear what my boy got to say. So he got his own people to tell him, right? Those, the people that were talking to him at first, that was his father's advisors. That was Solomon's advisors. He was like, man, I don't even know y'all like that. I was like, you know what I'm saying, man? He like, you know what I'm saying? We're my boys that went to school with me. You know what I'm saying? So then he got his boys. Let's see what his boys and told And he said unto them, what counsel do you give that we may answer this people? Mm -hmm. Who have spoken to me, saying, make the yoke which your father did put up on us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, this is how you should speak unto the people. Mm -hmm. And spoke unto you, saying, your father made our yoke heavy, but make, your, make it lighter unto us. This is the advice they gave. Watch it. You shall say unto them, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. He said, my little finger is going to be bigger than my, my father's loins. Right? He said, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Y'all complaining about this? You ain't seen darn nothing yet. Right? Keep going. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. 
And the king's answer, and the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him, mm -hmm. and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, "My father made you your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My mm -hmm. father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions." Mm -hmm. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the call for the cause was from the Lord that he might perform his saying. Which the Lord spake to Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Peter he said, What have portion have we in David? Right? In other words, you Judah's king. You ain't mess with the rest of us. That's how they look at it. Like you ain't mess with the rest of us. Why would they have that idea? Because there was already a split. Right? That split was already there. Right? So they already felt separated to some degree, even from David. And then it goes on to Solomon. And then they, they have Jeroboam that's ready for, they have finally have somebody that'll lead this charge to kind of voice their concerns. And then Rehoboam answered them harshly. So then Jeroboam's like, there's my opportunity. Let's split, guys. Let's go. And they made Jeroboam king. So that's where the kingdom split. Right? That's where it officially split. But you can see everything was already in the works. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of things falling in place. The Most High God can just fix if we obey. Or if we don't obey, Most High God was like, okay, we're well, good. I already had it in place for you to lose out. I already had it in place for these things to happen. Right? We ain't going to notice it. Right? We ain't going to notice it. But we can just see all these things playing out. Everything. That's why you got to pay attention to what's going on in the world. Because all this stuff is just setting up. That's all it do is just setting up. You don't know what direction it's about to go in. In one moment, all you do is realize, like, oh, crap. Right? That thing been building up for forever. All right? Any questions? All right, let's pray out. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what